Watch this. This state of emergency has pushed some people into a state of panic when it comes to paying their bills. Unemployment has seen some unprecedented numbers and a logjam of unpaid claims. May Day, the first day of reopening Idaho. What exactly will that look like? Will 90% of businesses really be able to open? And what will change for you? They say this stay at home order has been beneficial for at least one thing, bringing the basics back to the forefront. One Boise girl has found a way to find the fabric of her community in her own backyard. Six weeks we've been in this COVID state of emergency, and in those six weeks, Idaho has seen nearly 118,000 people file a first time unemployment claim. The news today, last week, only about 8,900 filed their first claim, meaning for the third week in a row, we've seen declining numbers there. So I guess that's the silver lining. However, more than 71,000 have been in the system and have been repeatedly filing for several weeks. Idaho has paid out nearly $45 million to unemployed workers since March 23rd, almost 14 million of that just last week. And believe it or not, that number should be higher. We've heard from so many people who have not gotten, as they put it, a dime. Jeff in Boise wants to know why isn't the state putting money into the Department of Labor to help with increased demand? I know several people, including myself, who filed six to eight weeks ago, nor have we spoken to someone at the office for help. This one, listening to the governor and when asked about unemployment, he stated he thought they were caught up. This is so wrong. I have been filing my unemployment for five weeks now and my status still says pending. And Debbie is pleading to get people their unemployment benefits paid out. She can't believe how many people have been waiting for their money and not being able to get through on the phones. And that's just a sample. Yes, these are record numbers in record time, but tomorrow is the first of the month and many will be facing another rent or mortgage payment due. Is it just too many too fast? Joe Paris tells us there's more to it than that. I'm kind of, I feel like I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. Dan in Meridian is not alone. Across the state of Idaho, people filing for unemployment say they're still waiting. What's a status update? What's the system look like right now? Um, well, we've paid over 45 million in benefits. Um, since the pandemic, we've paid over 63 million in uh, federal benefits that were offered through the CARES Act since the pandemic. Those millions of dollars have helped Idahoans in need, but others are still waiting. During the pandemic so far, laid off Idaho workers have filed 117,811 claims, all for unemployment benefits. So I haven't worked since uh, oh, back in March. Dan tells me he's more than happy to go back to work as a truck driver so he can earn a living. His only hang up? The problem I have is because I'm 60 and have asthma, doctors advise me not to. Unfortunately, it's taking time to get to them. Leah Reeder with the Idaho Department of Labor understands the frustration that many have. The department says they want to pay people who are eligible, though, as fast as they can. The simple truth, though, is that they have a lot of claims to get through. And within a matter of weeks, we went from record low unemployment insurance to record high unemployment insurance. So it's taken us a bit of time because unemployment, it is a difficult program. It's taken us time to get folks on board um, to retrain people who maybe worked in unemployment before. We've had all hands on deck. So anybody who has unemployment insurance experience that is somewhere else within the agency, they've come back to unemployment to help us. Still, though, a lot of people like Dan are waiting for a call. You know, they're telling us to be patient, but I feel like I've been forgotten. I haven't been contacted by them in three weeks. The department says it's important to remember that unemployment rules were not thrown out simply because there was a pandemic. There's still a process to go through, and sometimes it just takes extra time. To speak to claimants and employers to determine whether or not they're truly eligible for benefits. We have a role in protecting the trust fund. If you're a person who's still waiting for a call back, don't give up. The Department of Labor says that you should keep filing your weekly reports, and they understand people are going through a very tough time. It's difficult because they're in a really tough situation, and sometimes, you know, we, we have our reasons behind it, but it doesn't make it any easier for folks that are waiting to be paid. What's out there right now for people that when the calendar turns to May 1st, they're really worried? 
Right. Uh, they can go to our website, labor.idaho.gov, and we do have a COVID page out there for folks. And we have um, like a help center resource page where there are links to a lot of different resources available, financial resources, food resources. I know for a lot of you, a help page may not be enough. So when will you see your claim if you haven't yet? We don't know yet, but at least you'll have a little more time to file a claim. Just this afternoon, the Department of Labor announced unemployment eligibility has been extended an additional 13 weeks all the way through July 6th. It's all part of the CARES Act they just heard about passed by Congress to help Americans and stimulate the economy during this COVID crisis. And that also includes that extra $600, which would be on top of the regular benefits for which you may qualify. And beginning mid-May, those who wouldn't normally qualify for unemployment, like the self-employed, gig economy workers, part-time workers, well, there's money in this package for you too. Again, we're told to check the Labor Department website to apply. So keep the faith and keep filing if you need to. And hopefully it won't take until July for you to see those benefits actually benefit you. For 37 days, we've also been told to stay at home when possible. And finally, today, the news so many of us have waited to hear. Idaho, we're going to begin to reopen, kind of. Kim Fields has a look at what tomorrow will look like under phase one. Starting tomorrow, May 1st, the stay home order will expire and Idaho will enter into a new chapter of our fight with the coronavirus. The order that required us to self isolate at home is finally over. So what's that going to look like come tomorrow? Well, the governor says 90% of businesses will get to reopen. That includes places of worship, daycares and organized youth activities. So long as the businesses follow strict physical distancing, sanitation protocols and any CDC guidance. People want to feel safe returning to work and visiting businesses. They want to know everything possible is being done to ensure that they will not contract coronavirus when they leave their homes. Despite the go-ahead to reopen most businesses, the governor still encouraging employees to telework whenever possible. Until we have vaccines and therapeutics for COVID-19, safety and prevention should be our highest priority. But here's what won't change tomorrow. Bars and nightclubs remain closed. Restaurants and dining rooms closed. Indoor gyms and recreation facilities hair salons and large venues like movie theaters and sporting venues all are still closed. Visits to senior living facilities and jails are also prohibited. What about individual behavior? Yes, the stay at home order has been lifted, but the governor still encourages you to use caution. Everyone must do their part to ensure we can progress to stage two by wearing face coverings in public places, washing their hands frequently and following the other guidelines for all stages. This means all vulnerable Idahoans should continue to self quarantine. And if you live with someone vulnerable, know that you could bring the virus back home if you aren't careful. Gatherings, both public and private, should still be avoided. We're asked to still minimize non-essential travel. And if we do travel, when we come back, follow CDC guidelines for isolation. The 14 day self quarantine for people entering Idaho remains in effect. We can only reopen our economy successfully if we can de demonstrate a downward decline in severe cases and meet other criteria. It is imperative that individuals take personal responsibility by limiting their exposure to others and maintaining good hygiene. Okay, so that will be phase one. And Keith just sent me a message asking about the DMV. When are they going to open that back up? Well, they'll start kind of working out the details on how they can limit people inside there as well. So that's not exactly happening tomorrow, but that will happen eventually. Now, looking to get back into the restaurant dining room, well, you're going to have to wait until stage two, which won't start until May 16th. But we still get asked questions like, what about restaurants with bars? One side will open before the other. And there are still some questions about why. Like this one sent in from Craig and his inquiring mind. Why is the rebound Idaho plan for Idaho restaurants and Idaho bars so dramatically different in terms of timeline to be reopened? They have very similar concerns with social distancing and sanitation requirements. I'm assuming there's some science based rationale, but I can't think of what it might be. 
Well, I guess you could call it science and since we got the answer from the state's Department of Health and Welfare. Basically, with bars that aren't supposed to open until phase four, which is the middle of June, they said it was a spacing issue. Quote, the distinction between are being made that is between bars and restaurants is that restaurants can more readily allow for physical distancing and sanitation in a more controlled environment. For example, arranging seating, limiting hours, guests, all that kind of stuff. Bars tend to be more standing room only, are more closely packed and have a more limited ability to control the placement of guests as well as cleaning and distancing. And I guess that kind of makes sense. I mean, granted, some bars do have tables, sure. But when was the last time you went into a bar and stood in one place the entire time? And correct me if I'm wrong, a bar is usually a place to socialize, right? At least more than a restaurant. And if there's music, like loud music, forget about it. How are you going to talk to anyone without leaning in? In a restaurant, you usually stay with the people you came with. In a bar, sometimes, but not always, but sometimes, isn't the goal to leave with someone you, I don't know, maybe didn't walk in with? I think Johnny Lee said it best. Picking up strangers, let me tell you about the dangers. Kids these days, always on their phones, right? Wrong. How one little girl and her neighbor, about five decades apart, are breaking through the boredom and learning more than a new skill. This week, we've seen the hottest day of the year, and now we've got thunderstorms and tornado warnings. What's up with the weather? Well, at least it's something different. And make sure to send us your questions or comments about today's show. And yeah, make it something different. 208-321-5614. Be sure to include your name in the text and the hashtag the 208. We're going to try to read yours at the end of the show. Well, now you can relax. It's quite a storm that we had this afternoon. Isolated thunderstorm possible tonight. Not everyone will see it. Nothing like what we had when the frontal system moved through today that really produced all of the thunderstorms around the valley. In fact, the Boise metro area, we're estimating about 150 lightning strikes. Boise metro, about 150 lightning strikes. Man, just imagine that. Winds are still blowing outside. As you take a look at this uh, graphic, we're going to show you the current temperature. And with this, you'll see that the temperatures have dropped quite a little bit uh, as we are down to the 50s, but we are starting to climb down into the 60s in some spots there. Now, in the way of winds, 
we do have wins. Uh, we're missing Boise's right now, and I understand that they're having a few problems technically uh, with the National Weather Service, but we'll get that on likely by 6 o'clock. But wind speeds, we did have winds that were up around 20 miles an hour, uh, generally west to northwest. Then if you look at the peak wind gust, recorded earlier, 61 miles an hour, not a record, but I can tell you this, that when you have winds that uh, are in the 50s, you're in the extreme area. So we had 61. So all the lightning strikes, a third of an inch of rain, as you can see here, uh, also those strong gusty winds. So you had the combination of a severe thunderstorm. Here's the best part. Tomorrow, it's gone. Okay, <laughs> it's leaving us tonight, and tomorrow we're going to be seeing a high of around 70 degrees or so. Latest uh, shot here with our radar is showing most of those storms are just north of Sun Valley moving into Stanley, where they're getting some thunderstorm, thunder snow, and then also uh, some thunderstorms that are just north of Twin Falls. So it's all well to the east of Boise and the Southwest Valley. So tomorrow we got 50, uh, 70 degrees for the high. Saturday gets up to 77. We might see a thunderstorm again. But that will be more scattered or isolated, not like what we had today, which is uh, frontal caused. And uh, not the big combinations of differences that caused the uh, extreme weather that we had for today. Next week, as we look at the temperatures, we start back up to the 70s. We could see a rain shower on Sunday. We're back with more in just a moment. With school out for the rest of the semester, a Boise girl is getting a little knowledge from her neighbor. But it isn't all wrapped up in a ball of yarn. And make sure to send us your questions, your comments about today's show, or really about anything. 208-321-5614. Be sure to include your name and the hashtag, the 208. Can't wait to read yours at the end of the show. Treasure Valley kids have been home from school since March 14th, a lot longer than the parents probably, and likely, unless you attend Napa Christian, you won't be going back at all this year. It's a long time left to figure out how to fill the day at home, and many have likely exhausted any and all ideas on how to keep busy. But before you jump to the conclusion of kids these days, all they do is fill their faces with electronics. It's not true, especially for one little Boise girl who's figured out a way, a creative way that is, to show that staying at home doesn't mean you have to go it alone. 
From the front, it looks like any other Boise bench house. But one look in the back, you can see the holiday home is filled with four active and outgoing little girls. There's four-year-old Ellie, six-year-old twins Nora and Claire. Did I mention Ellie? Then there's older sister Hattie. I'm doing the knit stitch. Sitting almost still and almost by herself. And who, at the age of eight, is just three days in. Yep, three days in. <laughs> on learning how to knit. At first, I was having a hard time. It kept falling off. Then Shannon showed me how to do it. Shannon. I like those colors mixed in. Thank you. Is why Hattie isn't exactly by herself. She started out wanting to make a sweater, and I said, let's start with a scarf. She started just last weekend when Hattie had an idea. Oh, she just went into our kitchen and grabbed some wooden skewers <laughs> out of our drawer, and I asked her what she was doing, and she said, I'm ready to knit. Problem was, she didn't exactly know how. <laughs> so Hattie walked out and asked Shannon. Could you teach me how to knit? Her neighbor. I said, sure. So Shannon went out that day for needles and yarn. And we came out the next day and sat down and spent over two hours knitting. And every day since, Hattie has pulled her patio chair up to her backyard fence. She got me started again. And Shannon gets to unravel a long unused skill. I haven't knew anything in over 40 years, but I remember now. <laughs> you just don't forget. It's like riding a bicycle. To me, the knit stitch is the easiest. So here Hattie and Shannon sit. What nights do you guys watch movies? Fridays and the weekends. Separated by about 50 years. It's a nice breeze today. Mm -hmm. At least six feet and one chain link fence. You just keep doing the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. And then once you're used to it, you're really good. All because a little girl, unable to go to school, wanted to learn, of all things, yeah. how to knit. I know. I'm tickled. She's talking about starting a knitting club. <laughs> As a teacher, Shannon doesn't consider herself top notch. Oops, got a couple of messed up. Oh well. Then again, knit and pearl stitches aren't all there is to learn in times of uncertain isolation. That's the whole idea is make it as big as you want. Yeah. Sometimes slowing down is the quickest way to figure out how we're all tied together. And it's time to get back to the basics and reality of, of we're supposed to be here for each other and help each other through this whole process of life. And with Shannon's help, and I'm, I'm so grateful. Hattie will be working her way toward that sweater. That's Hattie for you. <laughs> One needle twist at a time. She's the best neighbor in the world. Shannon says she was worried Hattie would lose interest in knitting after that first day when she had a little difficulty. Well, she hasn't. In fact, Hattie says she will be brings her knitting to bed each night because it helps her calm down before she goes to sleep.
April showers, spring May flowers, and apparently some serious storm damage as we've seen this afternoon. What we're about to show you for today's COVID calm may seem counterintuitive to some of you. Stormy weather from earlier today. Rain calming? Yeah, it can be. Thunderstorms and wind damage? Eh, not so much. This may be the only time you want to be told to stay home. For today's COVID calm, we're going to bring the storm to you.